Hello all, Ankit this side. I hope you all are good. In this video, we are going to learn something new about S3, which they have recently launched called Directory Bucket. Earlier in S3, we have just only one type of bucket, but now we have two type of buckets. The first one is called as Journal Purpose Bucket, and the new one is called as Directory Bucket. General purpose is the original S3 type of bucket, which is recommended for all use cases and patterns. Under general purpose bucket, we can store our data in all store classes, which we have seven types of classes we can store there. But now we have one more type of class called as S3 Express One Zoom. Except this particular class, we can store a data in other classes under journal purpose bucket. But directory bucket can store only data in S3 Express One Zone Storage class, which is recommended in your application where we have performance sensitive. Means you need a, a huge better performance. That time we can go with the directory bucket and what is s3 express one zone x3 express one zone is where the data is going to store in single availability zone they are not going to store our data in multi availability zone in this one they are going to store only in single availability zone Whenever we are trying to create this bucket, we need to select region, the one which we need to done for our journal purpose also. But when we are going with directory bucket, we also need to select availability zone. And maximum we can create 10 directory bucket in your AWS account. But it can be possible we can increase this limit by using a service called service quotas and under directory bucket we can store unlimited objects there is no limit you can store unlimited objects now this is what we have about directory bucket now we are going to discuss about the naming convention Whatever the name we are giving it, that particular name needs to be unique under that particular region and availability zone. And whenever we are giving the name needs to be minimum three, maximum 63 characters long, including suffix. Now, what is this? This is something new we are getting for S3 naming convention. Yes, we'll discuss that. Contains only lower letters, numbers, and hyphens. Begin and end with number or letter. Now, what is suffix? Whenever we are giving the name to our bucket, we also need to give this thing. What is it? First, we need to give the availability zone ID. Then we need to give two hyphens then x one single hyphen and then s3 it is mandatory and don't worry you don't need to type this name manually whenever we are selecting the availability zone while creating the directory bucket at that time when we are giving the name automatically system will select this surface you just need to give the base name of the directory bucket and currently, this particular service right now available only in four regions. US East 1, US West 2, AP Northeast 1, EU North 1. Only in these four regions, right now, this particular service is there. Not in any other region. So how we can create this particular directory bucket? So for this one, first we need to log in our AWS account, which I have already done. Go to S3 service. Yeah. 
Now I'm in the S3 service, go to buckets. Here you can see we are getting general purpose bucket, directory bucket. I'm going to click on directory bucket. And here you can see the regions which is available right now, the four regions which I've told you. It is available only in these four regions, not in any other region. To create this one, we are in the directory bucket. Click on create bucket. Yeah. Now you can see here they are selected directory one. Now here I'm able to see all the regions. Let's say I'm going to select Mumbai. When I select Mumbai, that particular directory option is removed. It come but I go with the general bucket. Now if I'm again going to US East one region, North Virginia, I'm getting two options, general purpose or directory, and this is new option. So select this directory one. And when I select the directory one, here I need to select the availability zone. I'm selecting the first availability zone. Check the checkbox. Scroll down. And here is that availability zone suffix. I just need to give the base name. I have given self online training and here comes our full bucket name. Scroll down. By default is encrypted. Block all public accesses on by default. We can't do changes here. Click on create bucket. We are able to create our bucket. Now, next thing is we need to upload some files like object we need to upload in the bucket. So click on the name of the bucket. Click on upload. Add file. Select the file. I'm selecting one file here. Scroll down. Permissions. I can't give public permission in this one can only possible by using S3 bucket policy or IAM policy. Properties. Here we have the particular one, storage class. Other than that, all are disabled. Gray out. Encryption by default. Click on upload. Close. Here we are able to see the particular file which we have uploaded. We have a properties tab here. Only these few details. Permissions. Bucket policy here we can give. Like we can give in S3, same way here also we can give bucket policy. And then we have a matrix where we can see total bucket size, total number of objects. We can see. So this is how we can create a bucket and we can upload the files under this directory bucket. I need to delete this bucket. Like once you complete your practice, what you guys need to do, you need to delete this bucket. Same way in general purpose bucket here also, we need to do the same thing. To delete this bucket, we need to make sure the bucket is empty. So select this bucket, click on empty. Type as permanent delete, empty. Exit. Select the bucket. Click on delete. Enter the name of our bucket. So just copy the full name, paste here, and delete bucket. So the process is same like which we have follow in our journal purpose bucket. So same way we can delete this particular bucket also. 
thank you all thank you for watching this video have a nice day thank you